Okay, welcome everyone. Hey, today I want to invite one and all to uh, learn how to use your computer. If you're not too familiar with how to do this, but how to take a flattened or a lot of people Mercator type images and convert them to the flat earth and vice versa. Now, I'm not going to get into the projection aspect of it. In other words, uh, if you look through some of the comments on my video, it's, ah, the flat earth is just a projection of the globe. Ah, bullshit. You cannot take a picture of a globe and convert it into anything because there's not enough data in that picture of a globe to do anything with. And if you don't understand what I mean, uh, just imagine yourself uh, looking at a picture of a globe uh, well here let's let's do this um, let's put globe now I want you to just look at those images if you look at any one of those images half of the data for the quote unquote globe is missing in other words if you take this picture here all of the other half of the globe there's no data in that picture for the other half so therefore you cannot make a projection of the entire quote unquote globe if you only have half the data Okay, this is why they use the Mercator projection and I use that term very loosely okay. Mercator that one he has all the data on there but as we know and as I'm going to show you it's all screwed up it's all skewed. So what I'm going to do is I want to show the average person how they can for free as they're finding things on the internet, as they're finding it, how you can show that every everything you see online, everything that's given to you, that's anything with this type of image is actually constructed from a round flat earth map. Okay? So I want to show you how to do it so as you're finding these things online you can play around with them yourself or do your own videos. What I want to do is I want to show you how to do that. And now I'm not a professional, okay? But I did stay at the holiday in last night. But we're going to, you're going to need a program called GIMP. Now, GIMP is completely free and it works on Windows, Mac, and my favorite Linux. So all you have to do is go to GIMP.org and go to download and download your program. If you have Windows, OS 10, of course Linux. If you know if you're using Linux, you just download it from your repository, whoever uh, it happens to be. So now, once you have the program, they will look like this. Now I'm running a dark theme on mine because I don't. A lot of times when I'm on the computer, it's dark. It's the nighttime, and I don't like the blinding white lights. So I have it on a dark theme, but yours might be white. But the first thing you want to do is go to Windows and check off where it says Single Window Mode. It's the easiest one to use. If you uncheck it, this is what it looks like. you got this piece on one side. You've got this on another side. You can zigzag them around, do whatever you want. Personally, I like the Single Window Mode. Okay. Now, let me minimize that for, for a little bit here. So then you can start playing around with some files. Now I'm going to start with the with a Gleason map. So 
so we're going to start off by playing around with this one and you can just drag it in there or file them open whichever one you like and you definitely always want RGB convert yes now this is the original file that's 33 megabytes so that it's a little large to play with but I'm going to show you how they were able to convert this and I've showed this before but we're going to play around with it a little bit more whoa that's a little too much that's not enough okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to extract just the map part of it so we're going to click on the oval button here, the ellipse, and we're going to click on fixed aspect ratio. What that allows you to do is just keep a perfect really round circle. And then we're going to grab the circle right at the black line here. You got to play around with the edges to get them just perfect. You'll you'll get to play around and see how it all works. That's close enough for government work. So we go to edit, copy, go to new. This little window will pop up here. Hit OK. I know it's a big size file. So then you go to edit, paste, and then the important part is auto crop the image okay so now what we have is the perfect circle but we want to get rid of this white area around the outside because uh, we want that area to be transparent so what we're going to do is we're going to go layer add alpha channel click on the little uh, fuzzy select tool click in the white area go to edit and clear you got to do that on all four corners. Clear. All right. So now we have a map that's ready to go. Let's go 15% and uh, 20. Now here's the tool you want is distorts and polar coordinates now if this is grayed out that means that your image is not in RGB it might be in uh, grayscale or some other format just make sure it's RGB is selected you'll be fine go to filters distort polar coordinates okay now this may look kind of funny but don't worry about it because we're going to change turn where it says two polar it's already in polar that's why it looks a little weird uncheck that and it'll give you the mercator style projection okay we're going to offset it by 359 degrees because it's a 360 degree circle and there's two ways you can do it you can map from the top or from the bottom um, whatever whatever you like you can do either one um, let's hit OK. Again, I probably could have used a smaller file. I should have. So you notice that it automatically turns this into a perfectly square map. Now, if you look at the uh, shapes of these, that, that probably looks a little familiar to you. That's because, let's see if we can find here. That's because if you look closely, That's what the Gall Peters projection 
basically looks like. Everything's elongated because they, they're using the initial conversion from a round map to a square one. They're using it that way. But what they did is the Mercator projection is nothing more than the Gull Peters map and we're going to take the image scale the image if you notice right now it's a perfectly perfect square well we're going to cut it in half so that it's a rectangle so it's a two to one ratio that means that you take the 3720 divided by 2 1860 so you take the height you see this little section here if you leave that link connected, that link will change the other one accordingly and keep everything in the uh, same aspect ratio. Well, we don't want that. We want the, the width to be that, and then we want the height to be half. So 1860, and then scale the image. Okay, and that is your Mercator projection. Okay. That's why everything looks the way it is on a Mercator map. All they're doing is changing the aspect ratios, converting them at two to one, and every map where I'm going to show you online from that comes from the government, time and date.com, whatever, they're all in a two to one ratio. Okay. Now you can take this same map, okay, because that's what it looks like. I mean, uh, let's find it better. Uh, that's small. I want a bigger one so compare it. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I could have offset this one so the positions were a little bit different, but you get the idea where, where um, Russia's not cut in half. But just look at the landmass, especially for the U.S. It's a perfect fit. Okay, it was they started off with a round map, and everything else is a projection, quote unquote, of the flat Earth map. Now we can take the same picture. We can take the same image and convert it back to a um, flat earth map. We go to polar coordinates and this is we go to two, two polar and if you notice it changes everything back. And we're back to where we started from. Now you notice I didn't have to make the image square again that's because the distorts filter automatically turns the image square and then converts it into the polar regions so that is how the flat earth map was converted to everything else so that means that we can take all sorts of other maps so let's take um, let's do uh, let's see oh I know let's do timeanddate.com one I've done before. So you go to time zones, uh, actually, okay. So this image right here, we're going to take this. We don't need this anymore. Now I just dragged it in there, but if you have to, you save the file to your desktop, but I just dragged it in there. And now you can take the uh, distorts, polar coordinates, 359, everything back, 
boom and there's your map now you can image auto crop filter let's do tools transform rotate and just drag that thing around any way any way shape or form you want so that's more like the eh, And we'll put it the just hit enter and you reposition it. So now you see how the sun is right there. You have all the images. This is where I got most of the data for the, the video sun, moon, and day and night. Um except I I heavily modified the the grids and everything else on there. But you can see this it always maps exactly to the um, to the flat earth the the territories all match perfectly okay so now let's take another one let's do um, let's do let's do time zones Okay, well, we can't save that image directly. But there's ways we can do this. So we could actually crop it. So let's see here. So you can screenshot the image. And let's see, we're going to go down here to. Okay, so I saved the image, I cropped it out of there, screenshotted it, saved it. Now you can just do the same thing. Go to filters, distorts, polar coordinates, and there's your time zones. Now that one doesn't look really good. It looks a little funky on the the pictures so we can go back and let's take a look at see what this image if we look at scale it's not really proportional is it so let's do oops, sorry about that just knocked my mic off let's do a 1200 by 600 oops didn't check it And then we're going to do, now, we're missing some, if you notice on here, there's no uh, Antarctica. So that's problematic because we need that for the proportions to be correct. So there's a little trick to that. We're going to go to layer, scale the layer only, and let's go uh, 1250. Oh, yeah, proportional. So now what I did is I made the the layer that sits in a little bit bigger to kind of uh, oh that's not that's not going to work either scale layer uncheck that so 1250 alright so what I did is I added more space on top and bottom to compensate for the fact we don't have that, the arctics on there. Yeah, that looks much better. But you get the idea. Um, that's not a very good image part of it, but the land masses are all in the same place they're supposed to be. But uh, let's see if we can find a better one. That image is a little blurry.
Let's go time zones. Oh, here's a good image. So let's look at this image. This is a nice large size one. Perfect. Let's view the image. Let's save that image. So now we have an image right here. We're going to open that with our little GIMP program. Okay, so we're going to close. Now, uh, actually, I want to leave that one there so we can compare the difference. So that one's there. So now let's take this one, but we have to get rid of this tab up here. So. I need to be able to, uh, oops, too much. Find your rectangle tool, and we want just the actual data, uh, data of the image. We don't want anything else. Okay, so we selected that, edit, copy. File new and then paste that in there and always auto crop the image. Okay, so now let's take the same Filters. Oh, I was wondering why I kept doing that. Okay. okay. So now you have a map, a flat earth map of all the time zones and where they belong. Now if you look at the the continents, they all match. Let's rotate those out so we can And there you have it. The continents all match. Every map that they give you that's in a Mercator style projection is a map of a flat earth map. It all starts with a flat earth map. Now, I know the uh, globe heads. Are going to say, "Oh no, it's a it's a projection of the globe." No, you dipshit! You can't take an image of a globe and convert it to anything because there's not enough data in an image of a globe. You must first have a um, three-dimensional globe before you can do that. You have to have a 3D model in your hands to do that, and no one. Well, let me put it this way. 
I'm going to go and survey my property in the form of a globe so that I know where everything is said no one ever okay there is nothing uh, okay when you look at a picture of a globe only half of the data is there the other half is missing you don't know what's in there all you have is a flat disk so you cannot convert a flat disk globe into anything other than toilet paper okay you have to have either a round flat map or a square map to do anything with because only those two forms have all of the data in there okay so it you can't do anything with a globe map a globe map is bullshit the other thing is that in most of these programs I'm pretty sure that they'll be uh, Photoshop's the same way, but you cannot. Um, once you create a globe out of an uh, image, you cannot convert it back. So, for instance, I can take this image here, uh, or any image for that matter. Let's just say, and we're going to filter that. And it's called a map, map object. And we're going to map this to a sphere, a transparent background. And let's see. Let's. Oh, I got to do that. Yeah, you first you can't do a sphere from a uh, flat Earth map. By the way, I forgot about that. Uh, take this. Actually, you know what? I take that back. I'm going to use I'm going to show you how that works using the Gleason map. So we're going to go through this one more time here, but We got to center this up just right. Okay, I think that might be close enough for government work. So now we have this back into a, um, just then we're going to convert this real quick over to polar coordinates. Now we can take this and map it to an object. I'm going to go sphere, give it a transparent background, create a new image, update preview, and let's let's change the position of it here. Let's do a right smack in the middle of the Atlantic.
Sorry about that, I should have used a smaller file size. Okay, so here we have an image of a globe. So I'm going to save this image. Okay, so now I'm going to get rid of all these. So now I have the image imported. It's just the image of the globe. We have a globe. So now let's try to do some distorts on it. Hmm. It's like a sleeping pillow. Hmm. Now let's try it and see what happens. We can always undo it. Yep, there it is. All right, let's try to no, there's no. If we undo the puller, nah, not doing too well. No, no, it looks like crap. Uh, actually, that. I think that's what bullshit actually looks like. Okay, and so many of our flat earth shills that are roaming the cyber highways come to the all the flat earth websites and say, oh, the Glacy map has nothing to projection. No, this is why. This map this image does not have all the data to create a it can't you can't do anything with it other than wipe your ass with it it's all it's good for it. there's no data there it's fake it doesn't exist it's an illusion created by some dipshit in germany okay and i'm sure the germans are apologizing that the they created Merc the Mercator came from Germany, or wherever he's from. But anyway, take this information, download the program. It's free. Play around with it. Find images, make videos, show how they distort our world using the fake globe.